Thank you, Pastor Van. Good morning, friends. Good morning. How are you today? Good. Fantastic. It's such a privilege and an honor to be here with you guys this morning. Um, and, you know, I was thinking, someone told me, Apache Junction is supposed to be a 55 and over type community. Is that true? <laughs> well... <laughs> I don't necessarily see that, but <laughs> um, I did notice at the beginning as they were reading the announcements, I was like, man, you guys have so many activities. I'm getting tired just thinking of all the things that are going on. Are you sure this is a retired community? You know, <laughs> you guys are doing so much, and I thank God for that. I thank God because we must occupy till he returns, yes, till he comes. And so I praise God that that's what Apache Junction is known for. It's known for occupying till Jesus returns. You know, um, as you heard earlier, that there's, um, there's some, that we have some trainings going on in the community and opportunities to get to learn how to share the word of God with others. And I know Apache Junction has been well represented um, we have some church members here who have been attending, going on Bible studies, reaching out to the community. They've been on the front lines, if I may say, and they each have a story to tell. I can tell you that much. <laughs> um, and how, where are some of our friends who've been attending the Bible work trainings? Praise God, praise God. Amen, amen. Thank you guys for your service to our Lord and Savior. And um, if you're interested in actually being a part of this, I know that we're going to have one, some trainings going on right here at Apache Junction. Of course, this afternoon we'll have something, uh, and I encourage you to come to that, but also ongoing right here at your church. And I would like to just highlight Kelly, if I may. Um, do you mind raising your hand or just standing for a moment, just stand so everybody can see you, if you don't mind. I didn't warn her, guys. I really didn't. <laughs> Amen. So if you have any questions and you want to know how you can get involved right here in your church, just talk to Kelly. I know she has a heart for Jesus. She has a heart for evangelism, and she really wants to equip anyone and everyone who wants to be a part of this work. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Praise God. Okay, so um, this afternoon, yes, right after potluck, um, we are going to have a training, I think, right here, okay, right here in the sanctuary. And so right after you enjoy a delicious lunch, come back in, and I will tell you the secret to staying awake during one of these trainings, okay? I will tell you that secret when you come this afternoon. <laughs> so I look forward to seeing you guys um, this afternoon. We'll, it will be short, um, but we will be continuing in the Word of God together. So upcoming... Um, Let's see. We have some major events that are happening, and especially as the new year begins, I just want to highlight one particular event happening um, in January. January 9th to 19th, we're going to have 10 days of prayer, and this is going to be happening in all our churches right here in the valley. It's really amazing to think that God has this amazing work that he wants to do right here in our backyards, um, that he wants to reach so many lives and use you and I to be able to do that as well. Um, so I encourage you to, um, to save that date, um, January 9th to 19th, where we're going to have 10 days of prayer. There are four major locations where we're going to be coming together on four of the days. The rest of the time, Apache Junction is going to decide what you guys want to do locally by yourselves um, and how you're going to organize that 10 days of prayer. So yes, please keep those dates in mind, and you'll probably see some flyers around in Pastor Van Kelly and the rest of the team will have more, um, more information for you guys as we get closer to that date. All righty, um, so let's get in the Word, shall we? <laughs> All right, if you don't mind, I always like to begin with a story. Uh, those who have been hanging out with me for a while know that I always like to tell stories. And this particular story comes from where I come from in Zimbabwe. Was it Sharon that was sharing the the children's story, when you were saying, um, what's the word for snake? And, so I, and I, I started thinking, which language though? Which language? <laughs> you know, because there's so many, there's so many languages. And in my language, we say nyoka. Can you say nyoka? Yeah, now you can speak Shona. Okay, <laughs> so this story comes from my country in Zimbabwe. 
And, the, and let me tell you, friends, the gospel has been going out just in an amazing way. Um, who can tell me something that Zimbabwe is well known for? Just shout it out. Not somebody I told. Yes, Victoria Falls. It's uh, one of the seven natural wonders of the world. So if you ever get a chance to go, go. It is amazing. I mean, you're literally hearing thunder. The water is fall falling so strongly that it sounds like there's thunder, and it's uh, it sprays just far out um, that one of my friends actually, um, his phone stopped working because he forgot to wear a raincoat when you go to <laughs> Victoria Falls. So when you go, take a raincoat, okay? <laughs> so this story is told in Zimbabwe. And this particular story is of how the gospel has been going out into Zimbabwe, to the people of Zimbabwe. And in, in one particular conference, they had... The gospel has been going out so much that they've had to not only build new conferences, but they've had to build new unions because the church is growing so much. And that's only happened within the recent years. So we have a conference that has 180,000 members, and it's only about four or five years old. Okay? At this point, it was only three years old and 180,000 members. And so here, what you may have is say with 180,000 members, you've got about 28 pastors <laughs> who may have, say, 50, or, well, actually they'll each have about 30 churches. Um, they will have about 40 companies and about 60 branches. So if they're going to visit their church, how often do you think they can even go to that church? <laughs> about once, maybe twice a year? and really just do a drive-by almost, um, and because they have to go visit one of the companies or branches around there. You know, so the gospel is going out, though, and the church continues to grow. So if the, church can, if the pastor can only make it to the church about once or twice a year, then who's doing the work? Amen. The lay people. I truly believe that this is the way that God wants to take the gospel to all the world. When each and every one of us are equipped and we go out with the desire to reach just one person for the kingdom of God, that I believe that truly the gospel will go to all the world. Jesus will come soon because, dear friends, do you know that it is within our power to hasten the return of Jesus? gave us that power to do that if we would but go and share the gospel why, would, why don't you pray with me precious savior we're just spending a few more moments at your feet and lord as much as i may want to say come in and abide with us you're already here because your word says where two or three are gathered there i am in the midst so you are already here we're simply coming into your presence and we're asking dear savior that you would now minister to each one of our hearts as I share this story, this experience, this testimony that you have given me, that, Lord, you would please be glorified, and, Lord, that you would encourage each and every one of us with a message from above. So I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So here I was preparing for a message, and God decided to tell me, no, that's not the message you're going to share. <laughs> Instead, he wants me to share what he has done for me. Is that all right this morning, friends? Amen what he has done for me. And to begin that story, um, we're just going to go right into when he called me into the mission field. I was at a youth conference known as GYC, Generation Youth Christ. Anybody know about that? Oh, amen. Several, several. Okay, I was there and um, a call was made to give one year of your life to Jesus. One year, that's it. Just give one year dedicated to being in the mission field, telling others about what Jesus has, uh, telling other, others about Jesus and his soon return. And I said, yes, I would love to do that. Um, my brother and I both stood up for that appeal. This brother ended up going that next year. I was still trying to find where I was going to go. <laughs> I, he, was, he stayed in the States. I wanted to have that exotic experience. I wanted to go overseas. And... And God allowed me to go with um, Adventist Frontier Missions to one of these close countries. It's one of those countries where we're not allowed to openly share Christ. 
all we can do is truly just live out our life so others can be able to ask questions about what is it about you? What is it about you that, you know, I look at Nancy and I think, man, she's always smiling. What is it that gives her so much joy? You know, and when I ask that question, Nancy now has the opportunity to share with me about Jesus. This was one of those countries. It was one of those countries where people were known for, what would be the right term here? For disappearing. So in other words, um, here's an average day for me. I would wake up and look out the window, and I would see, I would often see soldiers going by with their rifles. And I would always be wondering, could this be the day? Could this be the day that they find out who I am and what I'm here for? Could this be the day that I disappear? But by God's grace, he protected us there. <laughs> and as we're leading up to going there, I remember I was fundraising to go. And this is part of what they call your faith journey. They encourage you to raise funds and um, you can't just you know, pay your way there and go. They want us to grow in faith. And this is our first opportunity to do that. So as we're raising funds, I remember I was so close um, to reaching my goal. I think I still had about a thousand, which coming out of college is like the world, right? <laughs> um, but this is how much we had left to go. And I was just praying. I'm like, Lord, I've asked everybody I know to ask. I've checked with everyone I can check with, but I don't know where this money is even going to come from. And I received an email um, from our student missions director. And he said, Karen, praise the Lord. I'm like, amen? But what for? Um, he said, we just received a phone call this morning from a lady who said, hey, I'm looking for someone to give funds to. Is there someone who needs help with their fundraising? What? Who do you know that just calls and says, hi, I'd like to just give $1,100. Um, is there anyone who would like $1,100? Does anybody know? That? Yeah, me neither. So, um, <laughs> so here she calls, and she says, I'm looking for someone to give these funds to. And just then, that was the amount I needed. Just like that, in one phone call, God had provided. I don't know this lady. She knows nothing about me, but God used her to bless to minister to me. One person God used to go and reach out. And so here I was now in, in, um, in this close country <laughs> in Southeast Asia. And God did some amazing things. I mean, literally going, I had two suitcases, a carry-on, and a backpack. And this was my whole life for this next year, maybe more. <laughs> if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Luke, where we find someone who had much like, similar experience. The book of Luke. And in Luke, we read in chapter 9, when you're there, as the GYC way is, when you're there, say amen. If you're not, say, have mercy. Okay, <laughs> so if you're there, say, amen. amen. All right. <laughs> okay, and so in Luke chapter 9, we are reading in verse 57 and 58. I still hear people who need mercy. So, <laughs> and we read. Now it happened, in verse 57, now it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Would you believe for three and a half years, Jesus was basically homeless, going from place to place, nowhere to lay his head. Three and a half years. Here I was going for two years, well, ended up being two years. But, <laughs> man, I let the cat out of the bag too early. But <laughs> here I was going to Southeast Asia. Two suitcases, a carry-on. I think I had more luggage than Jesus had going there. And I already felt like, wow, I am losing out on so much. 
stuff, right? You know, as I was going there. But here it says that Jesus did not have anywhere to lay his head. He was truly stepping out on faith. And dear friends, oftentimes we wonder, is God still working miracles today? Is God still doing these amazing miracles in day-to-day life? And I want to invite you, friends, if that is your question today, that you step out on faith so you may be able to start experiencing these miracles that God is doing today. While I was there, friends, I remember taking a trip with one of my students. She had asked me, she said, teacher, I I was there teaching English. This was our um, alias there, our reason for being in the country because they would not allow missionaries in. And I was there teaching English, and one of my students said, teacher, I would love for you to come and meet some of my family. Would you please come with me to go? I, I li- my, f- my family lives all the way out in the mountains. Would you please go with me? You know, and I could tell you so many stories about just the trips going up there and back. Um, I remember one time, you know, kind of waking up, because w- the road was very windy, so if you had um, car sickness or anything like that, <laughs> yeah, it was not the best trip at all. <laughs> but um, I remember we were on this double-decker bus, and, and we were traveling overnight on this trip. And I remember waking up in the middle of the night, and you know, I was just trying to get some sleep, right? And then I woke up in the middle of the night um, to hear people scrambling all around. They turned the lights on and all this. I said, what's going on? He said, oh, um, it, the, the bus driver and some of the staff are outside. They said that the, the bus is kind of hanging off the edge of the cliff. I'm like, oh, okay. I looked down and I could see people like running around scrambling. I'm like, Lord, protect us. And I went back to sleep. Right? So, <laughs> so <laughs> I was tired. <laughs> At this point, friends, we'd been through enough things <laughs> to just say, Lord, <laughs> I choose life, right? <laughs> so, so this really happened, friends. Like I said, I could tell you so many stories. Um, but today we'll try to stay on track, amen? <laughs> and so when we got, when, when I was there with my student, she said, aunt, t- teacher, I would like for you to come and meet my aunt. And I went to meet her aunt with her. And she said, teacher, teacher, my aunt is very sick. Her aunt was actually just laying down on a mat, and, as I'm, and, and she'd been sick for some time, and they didn't know what to do. Uh, you might be asking, why isn't she in hospital? Why aren't they calling 911? Well, in this particular country, it's safer for you to do home treatments than be in hospital. I remember being in one of the hospitals, and uh, my friend had broken, we thought maybe she had broken her arm, and as she went to get an x-ray. The table where she was supposed to get an x-ray had blood on it. Just no. So even the people there, they, they do not even want anything to do with the hospitals there. They're scared to go there. They'd rather die in their own homes than go to these hospitals. Okay, so this is where they are. And so, so her aunt, so to even suggest, let's take her to the hospital, it wasn't an option. It wasn't an option. So here she is, she's like, um, she's like, we said, okay, well, let's pray with you. Let's pray with you. Um, again, fresh out of college, right? I can pray. I can pray. You know, so, um, I, so I said, okay, let's pray, and we prayed together. And then after we were done praying, I began to look around, and the windows all around the house, I could see these little charms. You see, two of the major religions there were Buddhism and animism. Animism means they would pl- pray to evil spirits. They call them their ancestors. And so they would pray and ask them to be kind to them. They would try to appease them with all sorts of things. And so here they are, and, and, and I'm, wa- I'm looking around, and I'm like, none of th- these things that are supposed, supposed to bring you good luck are bringing you any luck. You know, you're sick. They're not helping you. And just then my student said, teacher, teacher, can you do that thing? That thing, you know, that, that thing with the water, w- that way you use hot water and cold water, and you know, you go back and forth. And I'm like, is she describing hydrotherapy? Like, 
how does she know about hydrotherapy? <laughs> and at this point, friends, she had seen other teachers before who had come in and they'd introduced it, her to hydrotherapy. Me, on the other hand, I knew nothing about hydrotherapy. <laughs> but she, was, she truly believed that this would be what would help her aunt. So I'm trying to think, how, what can we do? How, how can I help her? Um, just then I got on the call with one of my supervisors, and sh I knew she knew about hydrotherapy. And I said, hey, c this is what's going on. Can you walk me through this? So just then, over the phone, she's walking me through how to do hydrotherapy for the first time in my life. God can use anyone, friends. God can use anyone. <laughs> and he is doing, hydro and we're doing hydrotherapy on her. We're using water to heal. And we prayed. I said, Lord, these really, really, really meager efforts, we need you to bless them. <laughs> and from there, after we prayed, we had to run back to catch our bus, head back into town, into the city. And I never heard anything about her aunt. That student ended up going to um, to a country close by, Thailand, I can mention that one, um, <laughs> and to go to school. And I never heard anything about her aunt. But I kept wondering, what ever happened to her aunt? Well, in the meantime, my year was about to end. And as your year is ending, you are asked, well, would you like to give another year to God? Is God calling you to do that? Why don't you pray about it? And I started praying, friends. And I sensed that God truly was asking me to stay a second year. Dear friends, what we find here in verse 57 of Luke chapter 9 is someone who is gung-ho to serve God. Someone who says, I will go anywhere with you, Jesus. Sounds like Peter, right? I will do anything for you, God. But only when things are good. <laughs> Here was the true test. Could it be that many wanted to, many were willing to follow Jesus in prosperity? But what about when things go wrong? What about when we're called to sacrifice? What about then? And for me, that opportunity came. As we read, For me, in the time that we were called to, s to give a second year to God, and I truly sense this is what God wanted me to do, at the same time, my mom in the States at the time had fallen and broken a bone in her shoulder, and she was not able to work. God is calling me to stay one more year but my mom needs to be taken care of. Yes, I heard someone say it was a test. It was truly a test of faithfulness. I wrestled with God, friends. I truly, truly wrestled with God because it's not, you know, it's not just my mom got hurt. It's I come from a culture where, as the daughter, I'm specifically the one supposed to take care of her. So if you understand that culturally, you really know the heaviness of this burden. God reminded me that he was calling me to stay. He said, can you take care, better care of your mom than I can take care of her? You know the answer to that. <laughs> I can't even do some hydrotherapy. <laughs> but <laughs> and in that moment, friends, in that time of wrestling, I said, Lord, If this is truly where you want me to be, then I need to trust you. Because it's possible for me to go back and be right there at my mom's side 24 seven and still fail to be a blessing in her life. I need to trust you. In Luke chapter nine, verse 59 and 60, then he said to another, Follow me. Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the bur dead bury their own dead. But you, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. 
Will we follow God in times of prosperity only? Or will we follow him even when he calls for sacrifice? Will we still say, Lord, I will trust you even though I don't know where this is going to go? Needless to say, this was tough on my relationship with my own mother. Needless to say. And God, in his mercy, when I'd made that decision, um, because at this point I was not an American citizen, I had a green card. It meant that I had to come back into the States to be able to go back and stay the second year. So um, at AFM they said, okay, we need you to go back for a few weeks and then go right back. So I actually got to go back and see my mom within that year. It reminded me of um, Moses' mother. Someone just shared this with me recently. Do you remember when she was called to, to, to give up her own son? That morning, she gave up her one and only son, Moses. Well, she had another one. But she had to give up her dear Moses, <laughs> right? <laughs> but she had to give up her dear Moses. And I cannot imagine what that must have been like for her to give up her child. And yet, that same day, when the princess found him, she not only gained back her son, because she was looking for someone to take care of Moses, but now she was being paid to take care of her own yeah. son. <laughs> Dear friends, when you are called to sacrifice, I pray that this is what you will remember. That when God calls us to sacrifice, he has better. He has something better in store. And in that year, friends, my mom w w w had the opportunity to share testimony at the end of that year. That this was such a powerful year of faith for her. Where God grew her relationship with him in immense ways. That if I had been there... I may have been a hindrance in that. Friends, I could not see that <laughs> at the time I had to make the decision. But in hindsight, I can't help but thank God. Thank God so much that he allowed that situation to happen. Because my own mother got to grow in her relationship with God in ways that she couldn't have if I was there. God knew. God knew. So then time came for me to return to the States. That they asked again, how about a third year? I'm like, Lord, I'm having a great time over here. What do you say, a third year? No. He was calling me to go back. But before I went back, I got, remember that um, student's aunt I mentioned to you that I really wanted to know what happened to her about? Well, I got to meet her. <laughs> here I was at the one church that was allowed by the government in this country. <laughs> How was this one church allowed? Well, I'll tell you this, the government had been trying over and over and over to break down this church and take over. But here's the thing, on the deed, it said that the landlord was God. So how do you get a building from God? <laughs> <laughs> They couldn't. <laughs> That's how that one church survived. <laughs> Surrender to God. <laughs> That's how it will survive. Um, so here I was at that one church. And in came two ladies who had just come from a long trip. You could tell they were holding all their bags. And, this, and I kept looking at one of the ladies like, I know you. I know you. And, the, and that lady kept looking at me, just like I'm looking at Ed. I'm like, I saw him earlier speaking. I'm like, I know him. That's, that's, that's Ed, right? <laughs> and, and, and I'm looking at her. I'm like, I know you. I know you. But, and she's looking at me and thinking the exact same thing. And it turned out it was my student's aunt. And, she, and at this point, I could speak so much more of the language, um, having spent so much time there. And she said, Wow, I'm so happy to see you. Let me tell you what happened after you left. After you left, I got better. Praise God. <laughs> and I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, just as you guys were telling me that Jesus can heal me. These things cannot heal me. These charms that she had in her home. 
And so she said, I accepted Jesus into my life. Now I'm a Christian. And not only that, but my son who was there watching you guys do all this and, and praying for me, he is also a Christian now. And wow, friends, the way God works is amazing. <laughs> Yes, and if that was the one reason why he kept me a second year, I would have been just fine with that. <laughs> because I got to see what he did in her life. It was so powerful, friends. And let me tell you, when you have the privilege of helping lead one person to, to Christ, you don't want to stop. You want to just keep going and going and going and lead more people to know Jesus because that is the best news in this world. There is nothing this world can offer that could compare. So it was time for me to return to America. And, um, and God had told me specifically that in coming back, he wanted me to gain more skills. More skills in what? Well, in school, what I had been studying was pre-med. And um, my goal was to go into medical school. So I started preparing for medical school. That's what I knew, right? Gain more skills so I can be of more help be a doctor. Well, in the time I was preparing for the MCAT um, to take the next steps in med school, I had just six months available to try and um, get a job or something so I could be able to get ready for the next step and save some money while I'm getting ready for the next step. Well, I, every place I applied to, I applied to all places that I knew for sure I can get a job there. None of them called back. I'm like, that's, that's new. Um, <laughs> now what? And so I'm, so I'm praying. I'm like, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? I have these six months. What shall I do? I receive a phone call from a friend. And this friend now says, Kieran, I've been praying about this, and God has put, brought your name up. There's an opportunity for you to come here and do Bible work. It's just six months. Would you be willing to do that? I'm like, what's Bible work? And I had no idea. <laughs> um, you know, I, wasn't, I was not in a church where we were kept saying the word Bible work, so, or two words. But I didn't know. I didn't know. So, so I was like, well, yeah, you're saying you pray, but I also need to pray. I prayed. God confirmed. Turns out he had prayed twice. The first time, he had ignored it. Second time, he's like, okay, okay, God, I'm going to call her. And so he called. And God worked it out to where I could go. I could go. And I, here I was, um, Bible working. I was telling my friend Mavis um, that it was in Spokane, Washington, you know, where she is, where she, is to, where she lives. Um, and in that time, friends, I'm learning to buy work for the first time ever in my life. <laughs> and God is doing some amazing work. Again, maybe this afternoon we'll be able to share more of those stories for you. But here God is doing some amazing work. I remember one time I was um, driving down one street looking for new Bible studies. And I had it all mapped out. I'm going to go on this street right here. And as I am driving there... I passed by a street, and God says, I want you to go on that street. What do you mean? No, we're going over there. Lord, he's like, no, I want you to go there. Lord, would you please get with the program? We're going over there in the nicest way. <laughs> we had a plan, right? Are there planners in the room who understand what I'm talking about? Okay, okay, it's one of those, Lord, I have a perfect plan. Just, just bless it. Don't, don't touch it, but just bless it, right? So that was the opportunity. <laughs> and so here I'm going. I said, Lord we're supposed to be going there. And I parked my car. I'm about to go on that street. But I can't leave the car. I just can't. In my heart, I know that's not where God wants me to be. So put my car in reverse, head back. Park right by that one street. And I start going down that street, friends. And the first street, the first house, nobody's home. Second house, nobody's home. Third house, a lady answers the door, and she's like, oh, oh no English. I'm like, oh, great. Um, now what? <laughs> you know, she's like, no, no, no. And, and as she's about to close the door, I'm like, wait, wait, before you close the door, may I ask, where are you from? And she said, oh, I'm from Thailand. I'm like, oh, really? And I greeted her, sawatika. 
In the time I'd been over there, I'd learned some Thai. <laughs> so now I could, and, and, and she was so shocked that she, she couldn't even speak. She just ushered me into her house. Like, <laughs> that's all she could do. <laughs> and I went in, <laughs> and we started talking. So this lady had had a longing desire to get to know Jesus, but she had never dared to go out into a church and ask someone or know and, and find out how she could because she, she did not have a very good command of the English language. But here God sends me to Washington, to her town, into her church, the church in her neighborhood, and right to her door to be able to share the gospel with her in her language. Do you see how God works? More than two years prior, he'd been planning all this. God is amazing, amazing friends. Step out on faith to experience God's miracles. Step out on faith. You see, God was doing some fantastic stuff. But as you know, when you're walking with God, the test of faith will come. <laughs> the trials will come, yes, but the test of faith will also come to continue growing us. You see, the small t trials or the small tests that you and I experience in life, they're really there to prepare us for the bigger trials and the bigger tests that come in our lives. We are, and, and we're reminded that we have nothing to fear lest we forget how God has led us in the past. Has God been good to you? Yeah. He's been fantastic, hasn't he? So don't forget that and keep going forward. As we read in verse 61 and 62, still in Luke chapter 9, and another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. <laughs> Here's another one, right? But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Oh, what a tough call, friends. That when we've tasted the goodness of God, when we've joined hands with him to labor with him for souls, we shouldn't turn back, friends. Just keep going forward with your eyes set on Jesus. Well, if it's any consolation, Abraham's biggest test did not come until he was an old man. <laughs> and Daniel did not enter into the lion's den until Middle Persia was in power, which at that point he was a pretty old guy too, right? So I thought I had plenty of time, <laughs> you know, before my big test or before my cross to bear was to come up. Little did I know it was right around the corner. While God was doing these amazing things, for me right there in Washington, the call came. The call came right there and then. And here I was in prayer. And God said, Karen, as I was reflecting on all that he'd been doing there, I said, Karen, I know that you've been holding on to medical school for the last what? 10 plus years, that's what you wanted to do. But I'm offering you something better. Will you take it? <laughs> Talk about a crossroads of crossroads, right? As I heard someone put it once, the cross is when my will crosses God's will. Here was my cross to bear. Here was my cost of discipleship test right here. <laughs> here was the opportunity to say, am I in or am I in? Don't even want to imagine. <laughs> Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11. <coughs> Hebrews 
If there's ever a chapter that I would say is my favorite in the Bible, this would be it. It's an amazing chapter of encouragement. It lets me know there were others before me. And it gives me courage to keep going forward. If we read beginning in verse 24. <clears throat> By faith Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he looked to the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. We'll pause right here. Here was the opportunity. Something I'd been longing to do, but God, but God, come on now, I can still help so many people as a doctor. But it's not what he wanted me to do. But God, look, it's something I've been so dedicated to. I, I can do both. That's not what I've called you to. When that crossroads comes, will we choose what God has set for us or will we try to modify the plan? You see, looking at Moses' experience, where he left even the riches of tre uh, and treasures in Egypt, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches. I knew then that God was trying to show me that he had to be first, last, and best in my life. He couldn't be anything less, friends. He had to have the highest honor in my life. So with tears in my eyes, I remembered how good he has been. And I chose what he has for me. That was over three years ago. <laughs> I said, Lord, I have no idea how you even apply for Bible work. How do you, how do you even do that? <laughs> but if you open up the way, I will walk in it. And at every step of the way, he's opened up the doors for him. He's provided. As a friend once put it, working for Jesus is the best. Amen. You see what God, you may say, we're talking about each one reaching one and being sent out. But see, friends, what God, the people who God wants to send out are the people who are transformed and fully surrendered. We need to be if we truly believe that this gospel of the kingdom must reach all the world. And we will, each one, reach one. So how is it with your friends? Does Jesus have your all? Is Jesus truly first, last, and best in your life? If we're honest, we know that he cannot have any other position in our lives and truly do what he wants to do in our lives and reach the people that he wants to reach through us. You see, in John chapter 6, if you quickly turn there, in John chapter 6, there's a group of people who are listening to Jesus talk and Whew, he's saying some pretty hard words, isn't he? <laughs> he's talking about how his, he, he, his body is the, the flesh and his, his blood is, you know, all these things that people need to drink of that. And it's like, what? And he's, he's calling them to truly make him first, last, and best in their lives. And they're really contemplating in their hearts, is, Lord, will you truly be first, last, and best in our lives? Or are we going to keep going as we once were? And in John chapter 6, in verse 60, it says that therefore many of his disciples, these are people who were following him, friends, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can understand it? What? Really? Really? To give it all? To give it all up? Are you serious? Are you serious? No, no, no. They're really contemplating with this. 
and among the multitude who were all around him. In verse 66, which is kind of ironic, John 6, verse 66. Oh, somebody got it. Yeah, okay, so, <laughs> so, he, so here it is. And, there, and, and this is maybe one of the most solemn verses that we will read in the word of God. And it says, from that time, in verse 66, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him no more. It was too hard. I don't know. I, 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 was, I was in it until this point, Jesus. I don't know. I was okay with it as long as, you know, I was only seeing the blessings and not the trials. I was in it until you asked me to bear my cross. How is it with you, friends? And Jesus turns to you and I, I mean the 12. Do you also want to go away? What about you? What about you? But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Lord, even if we wanted to leave, there's nothing else out there. Lord, even if we went back, we've done that already. We know it cannot satisfy. You are the only way. We're in and we're in. <laughs> we're all in, Jesus. Where you go, I'm going. Whatever cross you ask me to bear, I will bear it because you're the one truly bearing it for me. Whatever the cost, I will trust you. You have the words of eternal life. You see, friends, this is a commitment that bids us to say, take the world, but give me Jesus. You see, this commitment can't help but plead, I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today. Oh, brothers and sisters, that there were one or two here who would say, yes, let this be my experience, oh God. Fill me with your spirit. For the works that God can do through that brother or that sister are endless. You have all of heaven <laughs> at your disposal. It's available to you just as all of heaven was available to Christ, it will be available to you too. Oh, won't you go on this walk with him? You see, friends, there's a story told of a husband and wife who went on a mission trip to Africa. Can't remember this country, so can't give you the name of the country. <laughs> um, but here they were in Africa. And this was at a time when mission trips were not a round trip tickets. <laughs> you bought one ticket and you went and you just went in faith and you hoped to survive. And as they were working among this tribe, friends, they, were, they had so many hardships. They had gorillas coming in and trying to stop every effort they had. There was a lot of violence among them, but they just kept treading forward, trusting Jesus at every step. And, when, and one morning, they were woken up by some banging on the door. The husband went to check what was going on out there. And when he stepped out, f the next thing the wife heard was a loud shrill. And she came racing to the door only to find her husband laying there. in a pile of blood. Lost for words, she fell to the ground and hugged her husband's poor body. As she looked as these gorillas who had just attacked her own husband raced off into the, f in, into the forest. And as they're racing off, she just screamed with anguish that her one love, her husband, was gone. But these gorillas went and they just stood out in the, in the forest and they did, not, they did not go any further than that. They thought they had done it. They thought they had taken away her best. But see, they had not taken away Jesus. And truly, he was her first, last, and best. 
And just then, friends, this wife, her cries, her anguish turned into singing. Just then, she began to sing. She began to sing. She began to sing. And these gorillas, as they listened, they wondered, how can it be? We have taken everything from her, and she's still singing. She's still going. As this wife just sang, tears, uh, tears shedding down her eyes, eyes closed, and just praising her God, even in the most difficult of moments. One by one, she did not see this, one by one, each one of those gorillas st started stepping out of that forest. And they came down and they dropped each one of them machetes in front of where her husband lay. And they knelt down right next to her. By the time this wife opened her, her eyes to look, she beheld each one of these men, almost an entire village of people surrounding her. And they said, if this is the God whom you serve, if he can do that for you, that when we take away even your very best, that you will still praise him, then we want to get to know this God. We want to have a relationship with this God. And just then, she won an entire village to the kingdom of God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but I want to have a faith so on fire that it will endure through every hardship of this life. A faith so strong, so firm, that it will say in the face of opposition, no turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. Friends, it's not an easy call, but with Jesus, all things are possible. All things are possible. And this is the call we must have going forward, friends. We must say, Lord Jesus, me and you alone. We will cling to you day by day. If that is your desire to say, Lord, I want you. I want you to help me make this surrender today. Today to say, Lord, you and you alone. Whatever the case, I will go with you. If that's your desire this morning, I ask that you will stand with me and we'll have our closing song. Amen.